Hey, it's the nerdy sports fan. The draft's over now, so we're issuing draft grades. I know it's just a day after the draft ending, but I watched way too much film and I have way too much to talk about. So let's dig into this. Um, we're into now the NFC West. I've gone through every other division already, so by all means, check that stuff out. But let's start things off for this division with the Seattle Seahawks. Um, the Seahawks have always been a team that's a little weird for me, front office-wise. They're very, very, very heavy on analytics. And Pete Carroll is an exceptional coach, but he does things a little different. I mean, he stays in his base defense all the damn time. He doesn't move from it at all. Um, and he brings that old-school mentality to the offense, the real thumping down people's throats with what he does in the running game. So he, he harkens back to some of the greater coaches from 20, 30 years ago. Um, I really like his style, though, and he has an effect on the way the front office operates. They never really go the direction you think they're going to, which definitely happened in the first round. So Brooks was a linebacker that almost every single talent evaluator in the country had going late second, early third, myself included. I didn't even have him in my top two round mock draft that I went through um, just a few days ago. So it's a bit of a head scratcher for me. I like Brooks as a player. He is a thumper as a tackler. He's got great speed. He comes from a program that knows how to coach defense. So he's going to come in right away and be able to make a difference, especially lined up next to Bobby Wagner. So I, I'm not saying he's going to be a terrible player. I question where you drafted him, because Patrick Queen was right there, and he's a freak in coverage and speed from a linebacker position. Maybe not the all-around package that Brooks is, but he brings a skill set that you rarely find at a linebacker position. So I feel like if you're going to get a linebacker, get one that's just different. And that's not necessarily what you have with Brooks. Um, after that, uh, they get Daryl Taylor, an edge rusher. Now, Taylor was viewed by a lot of people, myself included, as a, a very good second round pick. So you got him in the second round. That's where everybody graded him. Um, I think he's going to be effective, and I think he addresses an important need for the team, considering they still haven't signed Jadavian Clowney. And at this point, I'm not really sure if they're going to. Um, they need edge rushing talent because of that. Now, Clowney was great for this team when he was healthy, but he wasn't always healthy. He got hurt, and that was a big effect on this team. They, they weren't able to do as much as their defense was able to produce with him on the field. So getting somebody who will be his eventual replacement in the second round, that's really serious value and really good value for the team in this moment. So I really do like that pick. Um, Damian Lewis, the guard, I... He's a guard. <laughs> There's a couple of guards that went after him that I think would have been at least as effective. Um, I, I don't understand why the heck he was taken over his own lineman in Cushenberry, because Cushenberry is a better player. Uh, albeit he plays center, um, not necessarily the position that you need to go after as the Seahawks, but I, I just think it's a meh sort of situation. Uh, is he going to upgrade the line at the position um, he's going to play? Yeah, sure. Um, you just could have done that the next round, the round after, and you could have addressed a different position that would move the needle in, in say, edge rusher again, or, or defensive tackle, and heck, even a running back. So I, I just feel like it's a meh at best. Um, tight end Colby uh, Parkinson, I, I'm really down on him. I, I think there's at least... Uh, two or three tight ends that were taken after him that are better. So uh, I'm not really sure what they're seeing on film versus what I'm seeing on film uh, from an all-around standpoint, both um, 
with blocking and route running, multiple tight ends that I think showed out far better on film. Um, so it's possible it's something in the interview. Uh, they just, again, they always end up going after players that a lot of people are scratching their head on. The, the most obvious one I can point to here would be Bruce Irvin. Uh, nobody had that dude going in the first round. They definitely snagged him in the first round. I, I just, they're always a little bit off with what they select. But it usually ends up working out because Pete Carroll's a fantastic coach. And he typically ends up turning like one or two late round picks into somebody who's actually going to be a quality starter or cast offs from another team ends up being a quality starter in his system and in this locker room. So uh, I'm not necessarily saying that they're going to be terrible going forward. I do think Seattle's one of the better run franchises in the league, but I, I really question the decision making on some of these draft picks. Um, Going forward, uh, DJ Dallas, uh, the running back, I, I think provides great value where he was. Were there better running backs than DJ Dallas? Sure. They were all drafted by now. You need a running back to really keep fresh legs in that room. You always need a running back to keep fresh legs in the room. So I, I like the pick of DJ Dallas. I think it's going to work out well. And maybe at the very least push Perry to be his best self because Carson is he's a baller week in and week out it, he just has that problem of ball control uh, where he, he puts it on the turf a little more often than you'd like Perry he needs to keep the weight off it, before he gets into any sort of training camp his effort it, is what you question and that's not supposed to be what goes on on the Seahawks. That, that's not their team identity. So getting somebody to push him is a positive thing. Um, beyond that, there, there's Alton Robinson, who's a meh. Um, I really do like Freddie Swain. Uh, I think he was great, especially for the position that you got him at. Um, he did fantastic things for his team in college, and I think he was a bit underappreciated by the scouting community. Um, he has more talent and more ability to affect the team year one than a lot of wide receivers that were drafted above him. So I really, really like the Freddie Swain pick. Um, and I don't usually gush about, you know, sixth and seventh round picks, but I like Stephen Sullivan a lot too. Uh, Stephen Sullivan, the tight end. Um, again, multiple tight ends selected above him that I had rated well lower. So I, I think that's a steal. So you have two tight ends selected. One I'm really down on, drafted higher up. One I'm really high on, drafted lower down. Um, I, this happens every year. A every single year, there's going to be like a fifth round pick or a seventh round pick that ends up becoming a quality starter. Um, Max Crosby, the Raiders' selection last year comes to mind. Um, you drafted Clellan Farrell and Max Crosby in the same offseason. At the end of the season, you would think, because he was the team leader in sacks, Max Crosby was the one that you selected with your first-round pick, and Clellan Farrell was the guy you selected in the fourth round. But that's not the case. So this happens every year. You get talented people that fall for stupid reasons whether it be injury or some off-the-field skirmish. Um, once these guys get to the league, a lot of them just get their heads screwed on straight and go to work. And it makes a big difference. There's a huge gap in culture between college football and the NFL. And that change can make some of these players that are supremely talented, that fell in the draft, a real pro. So I, I like the end of the draft for Seattle. I, I don't necessarily like everything. I, I'm high on players as much as I am low on players in this draft. So it's an average rating for me. I gave them a C. Let me know what you think, though. Hit me up in the comments. If you vehemently disagree with me on Brooks, um, if you think he's the next Bobby Wagner, let me know. 
Hit up the rest of my videos to see what I think about the rest of the league. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I always appreciate that. And check out my Patreon this year. So most of my content, especially during the season, is fantasy football focused. And if you need help setting your draft board, if you need help setting your lineup, hit me up. I'm your man. Thanks for watching.